guys welcome to civil 3d tutorial and today we're going to get into a bit more surfaces this time so this time i'm going to show you how to do some surface analysis um, so for that just open your tin surface and uh, it doesn't matter what style you have as a base style so either a triangulation or a contour style should be uh, good enough uh, select your surface and then go to surface properties from the ribbon here or you can right click here and go to surface properties it's all the same so you got the surface properties dialog box and uh, so we have already seen how to create a new surface style and all those things in the previous lessons so in this one uh, i'm going to quickly show you how to do the analysis so if you go to the analysis tab uh, you can choose different types of analysis that you can perform um, so civil 3d gives you standard set of analysis which comes from there is contour analysis uh, directions elevation slopes slope arrows user defined contours and watersheds so what this one does is each of those analysis you can control some of those parameters to display data based on some calculations so now if you choose contours you see this legend will give you some idea of what you're going to get so you can get a preview or you can go to edit and this is basically editing your legend so now if you look at this one so you can see what are the data that you're going to get so the things basically on an ANZ contour ranges style so you will get the number that's basically index number and then you will have the minimum elevation maximum elevation and the volume so this is all the data you get and this is actually the code from which you actually get the data so you can actually go here and then you can change the data that comes up here as well so if you want to format it and if you want to do some changes you can do it or if you want to add some new columns you can do that as well and then display so you can obviously control the the legend borders the text the fill area all those items you can control it as well so this is pretty much the legend and you can choose a different legend as well so there is another one which is standard if you click on edit it shows you number minimum elevation maximum elevation you can add new columns and uh, as i said you can double click here on this cell that's your column value and then you can choose what type of data you want in here so we already have the minimum elevation and the maximum elevation. So if you want the 2D area, 3D area, total volume. So if you want to have the. Okay, so this is how you set your uh, style for your legend. So now, um, so I'm just going to choose one of the ANZ ones, which is fine. And then um, I can choose the type of analysis as well. Uh, so let's start with elevation analysis, which is a bit easier to understand what it does. So if I choose elevation analysis, again, the legend table, you can choose whatever you want. So you, you got ranges, 2D areas, and there is another one with 2D areas with volumes. The same way you can click on choose any of them, you can actually copy current selection and you can make your own uh, style as well. So it's pretty easy. And then uh, number of ranges, and then uh, you can choose the number of ranges. So what it does is, so your surface has got the lowest elevation and then the highest elevation. So what it, it basically splits your entire surface into eight ranges. So from the lowest most point to the highest most point, it splits into eight ranges. So the most important thing is people tend to forget is clicking onto this little button here. So this is what actually runs the analysis. So without that one, your legend table, once you paste it onto your uh, model space, it's gonna be empty. So this is the most important thing. So I'm gonna click on this one. And once you've done that, um, so this is basically reset range properties from the selected style. So it just resets everything. Um, so now I'm just run the, run the analysis. So it shows the ID and then that is the lowest most elevation and then the highest most elevation. So if you split that by eight ranges, so this is all the values you get. And that range between that and that is going to be in that color. So you can see, you can click on that and then you can change the color as well. Pretty easy. And uh, once you're happy with that, now watch here, once you click on OK, you can see that that uh, analysis is done, but you're not able to see anything on the screen. The reason being is, if you go back to your surface properties, under the information tab, you see there is a style that we choose. Right now it's still under two meter interval contours. So if you scroll down, um, you can find styles which says analysis. So that you can choose either elevation 2D or 3D. So the 2D analysis will show the colors in 2D. Pretty much it's good for printing on paper if you want to show it on reports and things like that. Even if you print it on a monochrome, you should be able to see different colors. So that is the 2D option. And if you go back again, if you choose the 3D, 
it gives you the wireframe so you can select it and you can go to object viewer and you can see it in 3d so you can change this to realistic and then you can see the colors here okay so you can change the color whatever the range if you want to this color to be in a different color uh, cyan or whatever the colors you want to change it you can go back into the analysis tab and you can change the color and make sure that you rerun the analysis at the same time if you're making some changes to the surface if you're editing the surface it's always best to run the analysis again so it updates the legend table so now we got the surface here so now how do we get the legend table so you select your surface and then on the top left corner that is where you see add labels here. So right next to it, you see there is a button called add legend. So you click on that and then you see in the bottom, it shows you different options that you can choose. The analysis that we have done is elevations. Click on that and then make sure that you place your uh, table pretty close to your actual surface where you're doing the analysis so people can correlate information. So this is gonna be dynamic in the sense if you make any changes to the surface, the legend table will update. The static will one off scenario. That means even if you delete the surface, the table will still remain on the screen. So I'm gonna choose dynamic for this reason. I'm gonna place it right here. Okay, if you zoom in closer, so it tells you that that is my surface table and that is the grid color, the text color, the different color ranges, and then the minimum elevation, maximum elevation within that range of color. Okay, so that is your analysis so now that's your uh, elevation analysis if i go back again to my surface properties as you can see there are multiple uh, analysis that you can perform one is a slope analysis you can choose it the same way choose the ranges and then you can see it gives you different ranges for the slope and the same way you can go back here you can choose this one to the slope arrows or slope arrows with contours so now click on ok and then it shows you the slope arrows as well the coolest thing with this one is whatever the style that you see remember we, we we discussed about extracting objects and whatever the data that you see on your surface if you want to extract let's say the arrows if you want to extract you can select it and then go to extract from surface and then extract objects and now you see the slope arrows here so you can extract all the slope arrows a bunch of slope arrows from a particular region you can extract them as well so now going back again analysis and this time I'm going to show you, uh, this is just slope arrows, just the same as the other one and watersheds and uh, click on run analysis and then it, it creates the entire watersheds for the entire surface. Click on OK and uh, oops, just forgot to change the style, go back here, click and then the watershed. Here's the one with the slope arrows, click OK. And the slope arrow ones is, is pretty easy to read the watershed ones. It shows you which way it is sloping and uh, the watershed boundaries and things like that as well. So the thing is for this one, you definitely need the uh, legend table. So if I select this one and then add a legend and then it's gonna be watershed dynamic and then I'm gonna place it right next here. Let me turn on my tracker. Definitely not the dynamic input. It's been a while since I used AutoCAD. Uh, okay, oh, here we go. Oops, what happened? Let's try again. Add legend, and this time it's gonna be watershed, dynamic, and then, what did we miss? Let's check it again. So select it and then go to surface properties, analysis, watershed, oh, the analysis is gone. So let's run it, click apply, okay, and then here we go. Okay, so now you can see that the boundary points for different, uh, it also shows the ID here. And uh, if you scroll down, you can see the boundary segments and the depressions and mid drains multi drains you can pretty much you can see all the data right from there you can change the color so some of the main things that people do is uh, they change the boundary colors to be a big thicker line so you can get to see some boundaries pretty easily so that is one of the things all right thanks for watching guys if you have any questions please feel free to put it onto the comment i'll i'll try and answer it and uh, please follow me on linkedin as well if you have any questions i'm happy to answer you guys on linkedin as well and uh, my name is raglan gautman and uh, thank you for watching thanks for coming and subscribe to my channel expertizer academy and watch our other channels as well if you like all right thanks guys cheers